Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to um, Romans chapter 1, verse 11. Romans chapter 1, verse 11. This was Apostle, Ch- Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome. And this is a New Testament church. It says, for I long to see you. This was Paul speaking to the church. It says, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. This was a New Testament church. That means impartation has to be, uh, is a thing of importance even in the New Testament. When God wants to bless a man, he reduces the distance between him and the anointed. When God wants to bless a man, he reduces the distance between him and the anointed. He says, I long to see you that I may impart unto you. There are things you get by prayer. There are things you get by fasting. There are things you get by studying the word of God. There are things that can only come via impartation. You know, there was a time I went for a meeting. I was about to minister and the Lord Spirit said to me, he said, a lot of people come for meetings like this without expectations in your heart. So what my session is to help you do is to help you create an expectation. To help you have an expectation for, the, for this meeting. You know, people go for meetings. Oh, he's happening here. The man of God is there. They don't go with the right heart. They don't go with the right attitude. They just want to be in attendance. They just want to see what is happening. They want to see what they have to say. Is there a new revelation? That is the attitude which some people come for, a, for, a, for meetings like this. But I want to help you shape your experience in this meeting. So it would not just be like every other meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, I long to see you. I desire to see you. Because there's some things that can only happen until I see you. I can write letters, but my letters will not communicate what my presence will communicate to you. So when we are receiving a man of God, that's why you see someone that will call, travel all the way from Port Harcourt. Please let me celebrate Mr. Joshua. He came all the way from Elorin. There are a lot of people that travel down from different parts of Nigeria to be part of this meeting. Can we also welcome our online audience? <laughs> Hallelujah. Apostle Paul knew there are things that can only, only happen when he's there, when he's present with them. He says, I long to see you. I can write you letters to encourage you. I can write you letters to instruct you. I can write you letters to, to admonish you. But when I come, there's something that happens. There's an exchange in the realm of the spirit. I long to see you that I may impart unto you. There's such a thing called an impartation of the spirit. It is of spiritual gifts. Gifts are not the things you work for. They are not things you even pray for. They are things that you are probably not even deserving of. It says, but when I come, my presence will come. In. A reason for the impartation. It's not just for you to share it on social media. Oh, hands have been laid on me and then you jump on social media. And it's a new level, it's a new season, I've entered. No, it's not just about it. It's to the end that you may be established. Established in what? Establishing faith. My letters will not communicate to you what my presence will communicate to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said, when God wants to bless a man, he reduces the distance between him and the anointed. Gifts are not in things. Gifts are in men. Graces are not in things. Graces are in men. Men of God are vessels of God's grace. And when God wants to give you a thing, he won't come down from heaven in person to give it to you. Thank God you have the Holy Spirit. He has placed gifts and graces in men that, he will, that will only be received via impartation. Impartation is one of the mechanisms in the realm of the Spirit. It's a principle of the Spirit. That even the most, um, let me, I don't want to use almost anointed, but the man with the most revelation knew that even there are some teachings that cannot just be communicated with words, with letter. He said, these things will only happen until I see you. So when you are receiving a man of God, it's not just to receive revelation. It's to receive an impartation of gift. What your prayers will not get you. What your fasting cannot get you. What days and years of labor will not get you. Impartation of the spirit. See, impartation is like time being compressed in the realm of the spirit. What should have naturally taken years can be compressed to hours. What should have naturally taken days and weeks can be compressed to seconds. It is called prophetic moment in the realm of the spirit. I don't want you to miss your moment. This is not just an ordinary meeting. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor, say, I'm set to receive. Say, I'm set to receive. So there's what your prayers will get you. There's what your prayers will get you. There's what your fasting will get you. But there is what impartation will get you. Hallelujah. In a book of, um, and how do you receive impartations? 
How do you receive impartations? Impartation can be received via words. Impartation of spiritual gifts can be received via words. Apostle Paul said in, to the church in Thessalonica, I think, he said, when, he said my, my words were not with... Um, let's open First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 1 chapter 1 verse 5 First Thessalonians 1 verse 5 this was Paul writing to another church he says for our gospel came not unto you in word only when you are receiving from a man of God you don't just receive the revelation you don't just receive knowledge he says it came in power there is a power that is communicated to you each time the gospel is preached to you. It says it came in dunamis. It came in the Holy Ghost. It came in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you. Don't just receive knowledge. Don't just receive revelation. There is a power that, is, that accompanies the word that is being preached to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So one of the ways impartation happens is via words spoken over you. Hallelujah. Um... The woman, Hannah, in the book of First Samuel chapter 1. First chapter, Anna had been believing God for a son. Anna had gone to Shiloh every year, every year believing God for a son. And on this faithful day, on this faithful day at Shiloh, Bible says she was so vexed in her spirit. And then she went to the altar to pray. And Bible says the man of God, Eli, saw her and said, Woman, what time, what time of the day is it that you are drunk or something? said no I'm not drunk I'm just pouring out my heart to God a lot of people think Hannah's prayers were answered because of the vow she made that's just one part of the equation Hannah's prayers were not just answered because of the vow she made but because of one, one other thing Bible says can you give me verse um, 80 for Samuel okay thank you the previous verse then Eli answered and said, Can we have the previous verse? He says, And I answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm not I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Hannah had waited for years. Hannah had believed God for the fruit of the womb. He had, she had cried out her eyes. And then the next verse, he says, Come not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. The next, then Eli answered and said, Let me tell you, the blessing can be conferred with words. What you have been believing God for years, what you have been trusting God. See, there are people that are believing God for healing. When people come for meetings like this, I understand understand that we have unique needs and one of the reasons God calls for a meeting like this is to meet our needs not just to hear knowledge not just to accumulate knowledge and I had been trusting God but Bible says and Eli answered and said the blessing can be conferred with words impartation can come through words say as I'm speaking I'm not just speaking the word of God is accompanying the things that I'm saying I am releasing life into every dead situation I am releasing life into every dead situation and when the man of God comes God has placed your word in his heart and in his, in his heart and in his mouth and then when he, by the time he speaks it for this good see there's going to be speedy manifestation because Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God confirms the words of a servant all he needs to do is to say it God can put your word in his heart and in his mouth and the moment he's been said heaven backs it up heaven is obliged to make it happen he says he confirms the words of a servant he performs the counsel of his messenger it says and Eli answered and said go in peace hey Go in peace. Go in shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You think you don't have a son. But by the next time I'm seeing you in Shiloh, you will be with this. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. It wasn't just about the vow Hannah made. But words were spoken over her. Words were spoken over her. When God wants to bless you, he will reduce the distance between you and the anointed. And that's why you must never get familiar with the anointed. Or with the anointed or the gifts and graces of God in men. He says, I'm the God of Israel. Grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. 
Eli's proclamation over Hannah compressed time for her. That they are, see, this naturally would have taken more years. But God allowed me to step in. God allowed me to see you praying so that I can declare the words over you. So that petition you have believed God for years, it will be, time will be compressed in your favor and you will receive it speedily. So when Paul was saying, I long to see you, it's not just for physical, it's not physical appearance. You can see me and nothing can be happening. But when words are spoken over you, when prophetic utterance are released in your direction, something happens in the realm of the spirit. Because God is obliged to perform the words of his messenger. He's obliged to confirm the words of his mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God was going to bless man, Bible says, God, Genesis 1 verse 26 or 28, it says, and God said, and God blessed them and God said the blessing can be conferred with words and God blessed them and God said the way God blesses a man is by saying unto him for in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and in the beginning all things were made by the word and without that word nothing was made with, with God we do anything on the earth it is by his word Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 20 he sent his word and he healed them you need healing, the word of healing can come in your direction. You need restoration, the word of restoration will be released in your direction. He sent his word. God does nothing outside his word. And when you come for a meeting like this, you are not just coming for, a, for knowledge. You are coming to receive the prophetic utterance. Hallelujah. It says he sent his word. When God was going to bless man, he said unto him, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, have dominion. See, if a man of God says to you, God bless you, how? Huh? You don't know the power in those words. Even if you were not blessed before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply. God conferred his blessing upon mankind through words. I decree in the name of Jesus to every dead situation in this place I decree life in the name of Jesus I decree life in the name of Jesus to every tuberculosis I release the word of healing in the name of Jesus to every high blood pressure I command you to normalize in the name of Jesus what reconfigure our lives in the realm of the spirit what reprogram your destiny in the realm of the spirit Can you pray in tongues under your breath for a few seconds? Yene meto boroko do shika la ba da ba da kata de boro. Ina masufre de ketolo ba ya da 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 da. Neme no sufre ketele bo shi anda ba da da da. Ege de 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 ba sufre ni kata la ba da ba da. Let me tell you, you're lifting in 2020. We be traceable to the words that will be released over you in this meeting. Zenina man topika vile no sute legete. The Lord said to me, like Hannah, waited on the Lord for a child. There are people waiting here for things to be birthed in them. And by the prophetic utterances that will come out of this place. Beline bekuvoli anamata kayada. There will be an expression. An expression. An expression. You are giving birth both physically and spiritually. You are birthing things in the realm of the spirit. Lenemo to viana. Wombs are being opened are being opened in the place. Wombs are being opened in the place. Restoration in this place. Restoration in this place. There is healing in this place. That the cost of Bali Adabada by the power of the spoken word. Let us be an amakatele bede bau shahaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham had been believing God for his son. 25 years, 24 years he had waited. God had shown him several, he had given him several experiences. Abraham, come out, look at the stars. This is how your descendants will be. God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. So from assumed father to the father of many nations. God had, you know, there are a lot of school of thought about the process of Adam, Abraham getting a child. But I'm not here to teach you about that today. I just want to show you something about the life of Abraham. Go with me to Genesis 18. And then in the 24th year, in the 24th year, Genesis 18, Bible says, 
Then the Lord appeared to him. That was to Abraham. Genesis 18. It says, Then the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. What happened next? And he lifted up his eyes and looked. See, God knew that. See, this guy had been in faith. It was time. It was season for this thing to come to pass. And Bible says God himself appeared in the flesh. Ah, Kai. God appeared. See, Abraham had been walking by faith. Abraham had, had expectations in his heart. Abraham, see, he had done every God even changed his name in order to change his to, to change his expectation. He says, and he lift up his eyes. When God wants to bless you, see, he will God will may not come in, you know, in human form, but he has placed his gifts and graces in men. When those men come, they are not just ordinary men, they are God in flesh, they are representing God in the flesh, they are representing God in the flesh, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, there. Three men stood by him. The Bible says the Lord appeared to him. Abraham saw three men. The Lord appeared to Abraham. Abraham saw three men. He ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. The next verse. And said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. The next verse. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me tell you, how you receive the anointed determines what flows from you, from the anointed to you. How you receive what a man is carrying, how you receive the grace of God upon a man determines what flows to you from him. Abraham saw them and said, yo, you're not God. He didn't even know they were, he didn't even know this was God in flesh. God knew it was season for Abraham to be, for his prayers to be answered. Hallelujah. And then he came, he appeared to him. And then what next? He said, I will fetch a muscle of bread and comfort in your heart. Next verse. And Abraham hastened unto the ten unto Sarah and said, Made ready quickly three measures of fine meat, knead it and make it cake upon the earth. Some people don't know why we go, do, we do the things we do, or we go all the way to do the things we do to receive a man of God. Bible says, He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, what's going to receive? How you receive a man of God determines what flows from him. So if you only say, ah, he's my pastor now. I used to tell people, familiarity breeds contempt. When God sees the posture of your heart, nothing will flow to you. I'm helping you to create an expectation. And Abraham ran. The next verse. What happened? And he took butter. The next verse. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? Hi. Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold in the tent. The next verse. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee. According to the time of life. At this time, Abraham's faith was suspended. Because there was a, a supernatural law that was set in motion. It is called the prophetic utterance. That Abraham, you have been waiting. You have been trusting God for a son. But it is time and season for you. He says, according to the time of life, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. God had already told Abraham. But he knew the word has to be conferred by a man. So he appeared to Abraham. And Abraham saw men in the flesh. That was God in the flesh. And then he declared physically. Abraham, you have probably been listening to me spiritually, but this time around I'm conferring with words because I would do, I can by myself do nothing on the earth except words have been released in your direction. And it says, according to the time of life, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind. And Sarah laughed. Her faith was no longer needed. God had already spoken. Her faith was no longer needed. God had already spoken. God had already spoken. When God's when a prophetic utterance is released in your direction, whether you are faithful in it or not, it's going to happen. Because God is obliged to make it happen. And that's why you see people come for meetings and then you see other people come for the same meeting and the expressions and the manifestations in their lives are different. It's the posture in their hearts to receive that determines what flows to them. And that's why the Bible says the word fell on some ground, it brought forth 30 fold. It fell on some other ground, it brought forth 60 fold. Fell on another ground, brought forth 100 fold. You determine what flows to your life, how you receive. You see people get healed in a meeting and you, you came with fever to that same meeting and you were not healed. And someone with serious pain 
Someone with high blood pressure. And you're one the ordinary fever. Me, I was on you. Was it that the man, the man was anointed? You were not just ready to receive. You didn't have the right posture to receive. Bible said Jesus went into the synagogue. He met a man that had a right hand, that his right hand was withered. And then he called him forth. See, in this day, I don't understand this generation. People were sick in the whole testament. People were sick. And they would still go to the synagogue. They would go with bent back. They would go with withered hands. They, would, they were looking for another alternative. Hands me down, me down kind of Christianity. Just give me money, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. Just give me money, I'll be fine. They knew that their healing was, was going to come through the world. They kept on going. They, ah. Ah. Today, once we encounter a small trouble, we'll stop coming to church. We'll withdraw. How can the people of the Old Testament have more understanding? Man with a right, a withered hand, a right withered hand. Luke chapter 6. And Jesus called him. He said, stretch forth your hands. Because healing can be released through words. He sent forth his word and he healed them. He said, stretch forth your hand. A man whose right hand had withered. And while the word was coming forth, the word of healing located him. There was another man that was listening to Paul. Bible says while Paul was speaking, he had faith to be healed. And Peter said, was it Peter Paul? He said, get up. He was lame in both feet. He had never walked from his mother's womb. And the word was coming. Bible says Paul perceived in his heart that he had faith to be healed. And he said, get up. And he walked. He sent his word. People are looking for healing through other means. They don't want... They're, they're not positioning themselves. They don't see God will never do anything outside His word. God will that was says by faith with that we understand that the works were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were made from the things which are not visible. That God did not create anything on the earth except by his word. And if he's going to do it again, it's going to be the same principle. He's going to release his word, and then he will send a, a man full of his grace to speak that word. Ha. I'm not talking about you taking confession of faith. Confession of faith might take time. You might even take yes. But when God sends his servant in your direction, Bible says there were many widows in Israel. Even there was famine, but it was only to one man, one woman, one widow, widow of name, that God sent Israel. They're going to pray, Father, let my word, let the word come in my direction. Let the word come in my direction. Bado vihanda mato vihanda bali koto bia siata. Yede bo si ala bana kata de bada ba. Yene me no koto su 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 su. Rebo si bradi shata la bara. Can you give me for Samuel? I want you to understand the power of prophetic utterances. The power of prophetic utterances. For Samuel two eighteen and twenty one. For Samuel two eighteen and twenty one. Eli and um, Elkanah and Hannah. They are went to Shiloh, this time around, they went to dedicate Samuel. And Bible says and Samuel ministered before the Lord being a child, got her with a leader therefore, next verse. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. That means at this time, Hannah had not had another child. He, she only had Samuel. So she kept on, you know, she would go visit Shiloh year by year, bring her, him a new coat. The next verse. And Bible says, and Eli, there was this year, they came to with the God. And Eli again, Eli again blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan. Can you give me this in message translation? The Lord give you more children through this woman. The Lord give you more children through this woman. Bible says, what next? The next verse. Anna, Anna prayed. Says, I'm busting with goodness. See, they went back home. Bible says, God gave them her. How many more children? sons and daughters through the word of the prophet through the word of the prophet Bible says believe in the Lord your God you will be established believe in his prophet what will happen to you your prosperity is in the mouth of God's prophet you don't just come to accumulate knowledge this is not a, 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 this is not a seminar hallelujah this is a prophetic meeting and I'm helping you create an expectation in your heart Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you, when you're going through a challenging situation, one of the ways God will bring you out is by sending a teacher, a prophet in your direction. Can I have Isaiah 30? Isaiah 30, 20. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, 20. It says, I'm though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers 
be removed into a corner anymore. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers. And what will happen when you see your teachers? Can you see this? What will happen when you see your teachers? Next verse. Isaiah. Praying tongues under your breath. Yano Sufreni Kadaba Shate Gedada Nemo Zuzumani Gelebo Shata Ladada. He says, Your high shall see your teacher. He says, Your hears we hear a word behind you saying, This is the way to go. That means the way out of that adversity, the way out of that affliction is by you hearing a prophetic word in your direction that will learn this. You will just know this is what you do. You will just know this is the way out of this adversity. This is the way out of this affliction. Because God will put the word that will deliver you into the mouth of his prophet and it will be declared in your direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Anybody set for the word this morning? Anybody set to receive this morning? Let me give you one more and I'll be out of this place. The blessing is released through us. The blessing is conferred through us. God blessed them and God said to them. God blessed them and God spoke words to them. Give me Genesis 49. He confirms the words of a servant. <laughs> he confirms the words of a servant. And Bodo Subrenike Telebara. Bible says that Jacob called his twelve sons. And then he said, he told them, Gather, let me tell you what will happen in the last days. And then he got to um, verse 3 and 4. He says, He cost Reuben. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How I set what is here. He cost Reuben. He said, You are the beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity, the excellency of power. He said, unstable as well. He cost him. He says, you, but you will not prosper. But let me tell you, the cost was released by words. And the cost was reversed again by words. Can I have Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy 30. Let Obari Galisha Dabanahaya. Hey, Masunde Higele Boru Gododo. Yenemeno Sute Keterere. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 30. Give me 33, 33, verse 6. Deuteronomy 33, 33, verse 6. 33, verse 6. Deuteronomy 33, verse 6. It says... And this is the blessing. Go back to verse 1 and then you give me verse 6. It says, 1 and 6. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel. Jacob cursed them with words. Moses, see, there were, the curse was released through a natural order. When God was going to reverse it, he reversed it through the spiritual order. And it, see, it was through his servant. He says, Moses blessed the children of Israel before his death. What happened? Give me verse 6. He says, he says, 33 verse 6, let Reuben live. His father said, because you slept with my wife, you will not accept. The curse is released by words, right? When God was going to reverse it, so words were also spoken. He says, let Reuben leave. I don't care the direction, the trajectory your life has been taking. Whether you have been in the wrong path of destiny. See, the word of God is coming in your direction. And he's redirecting you. He's, re he's rerouting your death. He's rerouting you this morning in the name of Jesus. He says, let Reuben leave and not die. And let not his men be few. Let not his men be few. Your father cost you, but I'm reversing it by the blessing. And let me tell you, it wasn't just a reverse because the, the power of the blessing is greater than the power of the cost. The power of the blessing is greater than the power of the cost. I don't care the symptoms in your body. The word of healing is coming in your direction. I don't care how the enemy has you know, oppress your mind, get you in depression, you know, giving you thoughts that are not from God. The prophetic utterance is coming in your direction and it's changing and rerouting you this morning in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Shout, I receive. And this is the last scripture given to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 3, verse 15 to 16. You give me verse 15 in New KJV. You give me 16 in the message translation. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Bible says, And I will give you what? According to my heart. Get ready to give me verse 16 in the message translation. It says, I will give you pastors according to my heart. What will they do? They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, see what happens when you are being fed with knowledge and understanding. When the word is coming, like I said, the gospel is not just coming in word alone. It's coming with power. It's coming in the Holy Ghost. It's coming with convictions. It's coming with much assurance. It's coming with the power to perform. The power of performance is accompanying the word that has been released. Verse 16 in the message translation. It says, and this is what we have when I give you pastors according to my heart, this is what will happen. You will increase and prosper in the land. Ha! Hey! When they feed you with knowledge and with understanding, your life will not remain the same. This is, see, this is the direction your life will go. Whether you like it or not. Because they are, they are coming with the word. They are coming with the prophetic word. When they feed you with knowledge and with understanding. And this is what will happen. See, there are things in my life that are not traceable to prayers. There are things in my life that are not traceable to confession. There are things that are only traceable to the graces of God I've been, I've been privileged to receive from. And one of you is Pastor Moewayo. I want your heart to receive them. I am telling you. There are testimonies I cannot share. But the people that are close to me, they know. There are things. They are, he, he carries the grace for speak. Grace for favor. Grace for increase. You might have been at a level. See, just burst in tongues. Shande boni veli gada bande de marose vi de bata. Hida bado kaya da bali hadada. Rise to your feet, everyone. Rise to your feet, everyone. Are you set to receive us?